Good morning and welcome back to Good Morning Kenya. It's quarter past uh, seven and as we promised you today we shall be doing things a little different because we'd like to appreciate the time at which the country is right now. A serious conversation needs to happen around how this country moves forward from this point moving on. A lot of um, uh, thoughts have been expressed. A lot of people weighing in their opinion on what Kenya needs to do uh, post this particular season. But we all need to remember one thing. When we talk about what Kenya needs to do, we need to remember that you and I are Kenya. So essentially the question we are asking is, what do you and I need to do to ensure that we move forward as a nation and uh, we achieve the best quality of this motherland that is Kenya. I've got a panel of two. One has arrived, another is on her way. We are hoping that in around five, ten minutes she will be here. But for now, allow me to introduce a city lawyer uh, to you, Man Manwa Hosea Karibusana. Sana. How are you doing this morning? I'm good, you? Uh, Awesome. Yes. I'm doing great. Yes. And you also sit in the Youth Caucus, Nairobi County. Yes. Karibu, karibu sana. Asante. And uh, we are expecting the company of uh, Alice Wahome, the Kandara Member of Parliament. She tells me that she will be with us in uh, 10 minutes maximum. So when she's here, she'll join us for this uh, discussion. Manuel, let's kick off with... Uh, after the ruling was rendered yesterday by Justice Maraga, what next for this nation? Well, I think uh, first we need to appreciate uh, the role that the Supreme Court has been playing in the political circles. Uh, I think we pushed them to the corner and forced them to make political decisions. Uh, the Supreme Court and in any other court in this republic has the sole mandate of interpreting the law. Mm -hmm. uh, on their part, we, we, they have washed their hands. They've finished their role. Uh, to interpret the law and uh, uh, give a decision as to whether the petitions which were presented before them were meritorious. Mm -hmm. they, have, they, they stated that indeed the petitions as presented did not merit and therefore they failed and therefore uh, gave a, a way forward that, you know, uh, the IBC or rather the country, the Chief Justice can go forward and swear in uh, Uhuru Mwegai Kenyatta as the President of the Republic of Kenya. So uh, for, from my own perspective, I think uh, what happened had to happen legally from, from, from our laws that they had to declare their position uh, within that constitutional framework that they had been given and which they did. Uh, there are so many issues or uh, questions that uh, will be raised mm -hmm. as to how they reached the decision that they made. But uh, we will, if, we, if we discuss that, we'll be speculating because we do not have the judgment already to be able to peruse through and see what informed uh, the nullification or rather the uh, dismissal of the two uh, petitions which were presented before them. So I think from my own perspective, they had to do it. They had to make a decision either way. And uh, usually in the court process, in mm -hmm. the legal process, uh, two, th two things happen. It's either you lose or you win. Or you win. So that decision had to be either way. Mm -hmm. Both parties could have not won. So well, now we have been thrown into a political um, uh, uh, now situation where what what we're going to do forward will determine the, uh, you know, the future of this country. Mm -hmm. Whether the leaders will come together and uh, find a way forward that is smooth for this country, or th still they will decide not to come together and you know, throw uh, this country into anarchy. Mm -hmm. Yes. You mentioned uh, the legal process is true, and yes. true to your word, it is. Yes. Uh, so the country is looking at a situation that could come with political solutions. Yes. So what kind of political capital do the president and opposition leader Raila Odinga have at this particular point? Well, right now, uh, there are so many differences. Uh, I, I, can, I, can, I can only discuss from the way things are perceived from both sides because I, I haven't seen... Uh, I've seen uh, parties who are interested to have these people come together and forge a way forward. Uh, 
you know, trying to uh, tell them to sit down and discuss on how to take this country forward. But mm -hmm. I haven't seen uh, uh, NASA because they have, they have had a, a very strong position that we will not partake in a conversation that will, uh, will lead into uh, split of government, uh, rather sharing of government, we'll have a conversation based on a, a new electoral process. Whereas on the other side, Jubilee are looking at a situation where they want the president to be sworn in first, then they decide to, then they start the cohesion or rather calling the other parties to a discussion. So it's, it's, it's more or less uh, uh, a very tricky situation for the country because uh, both parties have not come clean. Uh, since the declaration yesterday, we have only seen celebrations uh, uh, and also, you know, uh, disapproval from the, the, the supporters of NASA and celebrations from Jubilee side. So, well, do, uh, NASA uh, have few options from my perspective, from where I sit. We have had issues of secession coming up. Mm -hmm. We have had issues of uh, federalism coming up. We have had issues of, uh, you know, having the People's Assembly. And uh, I'm sure you're aware of the National uh, Resistance Movement, mm -hmm. which is taking shape. Those are the options they have. Uh, as to whether they are constitutional or not, that, that is a question of uh, debate. Whereas on Jubilee side, uh, I think they have also tried to say, let's follow the law. The law provides that if you are aggrieved with an electoral process, go to court, which the, uh, you know, the aggrieved parties presented their petitions to court and uh, you know, got a determination in, uh, 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 the court gave a determination in the favor of Jubilee. So there's, as, as early as now, we can say it's so gray to be able to see what each party has. Mm -hmm. All we can say is to sit and wait and, uh, and hope that these two parties can be able to reach a favorable agreement. A favorable agreement. Yes. And uh, Manuel, you raised the question of cessation and uh, federalism. Yes. One that has saturated the air in yes. the recent past. Yes. The cause, purpose and inspiration behind it, would you describe it as legit? Well, you know, the first question we need to ask ourselves some um, is how did we get ourselves here? Mm -hmm. And uh, Kenyans have been avoiding this question, especially our political class. They have been avoiding the question of how we got ourselves here. And, and the question is based on representation and exclusion. There are, part, there are parts of this country, who, uh, people from this country who believe that they have been uh, fashionably excluded from sharing the national cake. And that is the biggest question here. There are issues of, 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 of tribalism, nepotism. There are issues of corruption that have actually, uh, you know, been made, uh, uh, and, and made, made up to bring up an agitation. Mm -hmm. So uh, the question would be, that, that, that is the issue that is making us have this political task. Mm -hmm. and, and we have had these problems every other electoral cycle, whereby, you know, there are parties who feel that they are being fashionably excluded and they, they cannot be able to participate in government. Now, that having said that, uh, the decision calls uh, world over when people want to secede. Uh, you know, self-determination is a right uh, provided for under international statutes, which, which we have ratified and also our constitution. And people have a right to self-determination. You saw what happened in Southern Sudan and, and uh, other parts of Africa. People who have decided to, you know, start on their own as a country. When people raise so, such issues, and actually it's, 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 very, it's a very sensitive issue. Uh, to secede from uh, a country, Kenya, and form your own country is, 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 is something that we need to be sad about because as a country we need to ask ourselves why are these people uh, deciding to secede? Mm -hmm. And then once we answer that question, we can be able to find a solution to our problems. Uh, well, if you look at the petitions presented for secession, uh, what I drew from it is that uh, some people feel that they uh, it will it will take another hundred years to be to to get representation in uh, in the national in sharing of the national cake. Mm -hmm. We need to have uh, this discussion in depthly. Why would these people uh, want to go for secession? That is one issue, and uh, the, the, there are other political players. Uh, I, I read uh, Anyang Nyong's uh, paper mm -hmm. uh, talking of federalism. And he, he opines that this has worked for the U.S. In that, uh, in Kenya, the, the new constitution that we promulgated in 2010 uh, provided for both two levels of government, the national government and the county government. 
Now, the intention of the drafters of the constitution, the 2010 constitution, look, wanted to solve the issue of representation and sharing of the national cake so that devolution can bring equality into sharing of the national cake. Resources were to be pumped into county governments across the board. Now, uh, fast forward uh, seven years down the line since the program migration and the formation of the county governments. If you look at and critique ourselves as to whether we have achieved that, I would say we have not. Mm -hmm. Look at what we have devolved so far. Much of the bigger cake is with the national government. And, and what uh, uh, the good professor was stating in his paper was that we cannot uh, have a government or rather, we cannot run a government in the, in the sense that the, 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 it's the one that gives us the firewood, at the same time, the cooking pot. Mm -hmm. If they decide not to give us the cooking pot and the firewood, then we cannot cook and eat. We will actually die of hunger in, in the counties, meaning that the devolved government has not worked yet. And the, 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 the resources which are supposed to be pumped from the national government are being held at ransom. And, and that raises the issue of whether devolution has really worked. Mm -hmm. Now, he introduces a new aspect into, the political, into our political cycle for debate, mm -hmm. the federal, federalist approach, whereby counties uh, manage themselves. I can give an example of uh, uh, you know, the US. Every state runs itself. Uh, schools in the state run themselves. He's giving an, uh, an, an example of the national government whereby uh, you manage the education system in the village. Do you know a school, the, 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 uh, you know, the person in charge of education, the cabinet secretary in charge of education who sits in Nairobi does not know the needs, the basic needs of the people in Nyachogo Chogo, uh, you know, uh, secondary school, a village in Kisi. They do not know the basic needs. But the county government, since it's within that county, if the county is given the, the, the palm, the resources to manage its own, uh, you know, uh, institutions, it can be able to raise its own revenue and manage its own issues. That way we can bring, we can be able to bring tranquility mm -hmm. yes is is the inclusion we're looking at here yes a political or economic well the inclusion is both political and economic mm -hmm. remember we have a presidential system whereby we go to uh, an election and uh, uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, uh, elect uh, uh, the the president and uh, the threshold has been set so high that you must achieve 50 plus one to be able to be declared as a president. So I, I would say that it's both political and economic. Mm -hmm. Economic in the sense that we are talking about sharing of resources. Mm -hmm. The reason why we go into politics is to choose people who can be able to distribute these resources to us uh, equally. Now, we believe, and, and as Kenyans, one of the uh, part of Kenyans believe that this uh, resources are not distributed equally as it's required. There is no equality in distribution of resources in this country, and that brings the political issue. Now. We want our own person, as the president, to be able to also mm -hmm. take care of our interests. Mm -hmm. So it's both political and economic, and we cannot talk about uh, uh, political issues without touching on economy because every every other political cycle we have we 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 our economy goes down because of the decisions that our politicians make. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the progress of this country economically is pegged on the political situation in this country and the political tranquility. Uh, I can give you an example of what is happening. The, 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 the boycotts the, by NASA, they're, they're hitting into the economy and, and, and if, even into our pockets as uh, employees or rather employees of these organizations which are boycotting. So, we cannot, shun, we cannot say per se that it's not um, uh, that our politics uh, is not eating into our economy. We will be lying to ourselves because if we get the political aspect right, then we can be able to get the economic aspect right. Uh, I'd like us to delve into the issue of inclusion way deeper, Manwa. Yes. And uh, flash back to 2010. And in the run to the promulgation of the constitution, yes. campaigners for this document said that there is no way yes. the system of devolution is inspired in yes. any manner to make Kenya a federal republic. Yes. Uh, and they, uh, there were those that felt that this conversation could lead this country into where we are right now, yes. seven years down the line. Yes. And 
everyone believed that with devolution there will be proper distribution of uh, the national cake. Yes. The law envisages 15%. That has changed currently to around 40%. Yes. What more is needed when we talk about this inclusion? What has been undone currently? And what do we need to do as a nation to make sure then that each and everyone feels included, yes. part and parcel of uh, the national fabric? I, I think, uh, first of all, we need to appreciate the fact that when we got into the new constitution dispensation, mm -hmm. we were an ambitious country. If you look at the constitution itself, the way uh, the, it introduced the county government, it introduced new political positions which were overwhelming. Now, if you look at it, uh, prior to the promulgation, we wanted something that can bring Kenyan together. We introduced the 47 county governments, which would were at the local level. We we looked at a situation where we can bring the resources to the people. Mm -hmm. I'll say seven years down the line, we have learned from the mistakes that we made. We, uh, in Africa, we say the Kenyan constitution is the most progressive constitutions, and uh, you know, compared to that of South Africa. And uh, looking at the county, the introduction of devolution to benefit the, peop the local people as compared to the former system where you know the national government was doing everything in the county government, I'll say that we have achieved 30%. 30% in the sense that we have actually defaulted the medical, uh, you know, uh, the health sector. We have, uh, we have, however, we are yet to devolve serious functions to the county government. You see, for a county government to be allocated uh, a certain percentage of, they, they, devolve, they say the, the functions go with the resources. Mm -hmm. You cannot devolve, uh, you cannot give resources without the functions. You need to give the functions, then you give the resources. Now, we wanted to strengthen the county government so that people can be able to, and, and actually they looked at a situation where we can be able to have uh, the national government has just uh, foresee, uh, foreseen the developments in the counties just for, for ceremonial purposes, but the bigger uh, function be devolved to the county government. It's not the case as we speak today. There are so many challenges that we have experienced. First, we did not know how to manage, uh, you know, there were no legislations as to how the county governments would manage, manage their resources. Mm -hmm. Now, we have had uh, uh, the county governments and, and, and county assemblies pass bills that are in conformity with the, the, the local uh, people that can be able to benefit the local people depending on what, what uh, uh, the, the economic status and what the, can, uh, the, the county governments can be able to produce. Right. So we have had that development in terms of legislation, but we have not had much development in terms of infrastructure and in terms of building up uh, or rather giving opportunities to our people. Why? Because still much of the functions are with the national government. Mm -hmm. Now, if you compare the federal, federal system to the county, uh, to the, uh, you know, devolution system, there's a, there's a big disparity in that for the, the federal system, it, it is the county for itself. And it's the resources, all the functions are managed by the county itself. You cannot be able to, you know, distinct, uh, rather hold on to any, any other you know, function as the national government. You can be able to bring your own people, produce whatever that you are able to produce. The national cake is cut and shared. We describe the constitution as a progressive yes. document. Yes. And that is a term that we've had uh, making rounds of the media in conversations around political process yes. in this country. And I know in 2015, we had a social economic audit on this constitution. Yes. yes. We are yet to consume the details of that audit. But then the constitution is progressive based on what? What are the indicators that describe the Kenyan constitution as progressive? Well, um, the Kenyan constitution is progressive on so many aspects. I'll start with the, the Bill of Rights. The new constitution introduces a raft of Bill of Rights which we'd never enjoyed in the old constitution. Look at the social economic rights that have been introduced by the constitution. Look at the, 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 the basic uh, you know, uh, rights that have been introduced under this bill. There are so many, it's, it's so progressive in the sense that it, 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 compared to the old constitution which was, uh, 
which was tightly. We cannot be able to, uh, you could not be able to do much. The new constitution, you have seen people going to court, challenging decisions made by government institutions mm -hmm. on their own accord. In the old constitution, you could not do that. Uh, you could not approach court uh, like a citizen and, and, you know, question government. We have seen uh, development in terms of uh, the devolved government, which is actually a big plus to the, to the, to the new constitution. We have seen, uh, you know, the new constitution talk, uh, introducing independent bodies. We have the IABC. We have the, you know, the, uh, the Public Service Commission. We have so many commissions which govern, independent commissions, which govern uh, uh, certain areas of law and certain uh, uh, aspects in this country, which was not there in the old constitution. We, have ba we basically have a document which is progressive on all angles, mm -hmm. both from uh, the development point of view, from from uh, the human rights point of view, from uh, the economic point of view, we have a wholesome document. Mm -hmm. The only problem is the implementation of that constitution. And uh, I'll say that the political uh, mood is not ready to, you know, exercise or rather comply with the regulations of the constitutions that we passed in 2010. All right. Yes. Well, uh, at that point, uh, we take a short uh, break. Um, Kandara Member of Parliament Alice Wahome is with us and she'll be joining us uh, when we return from this short breather, so keep it right here. Back to the program, and I'd like to begin by echoing uh, feedback that I'm receiving here. Really strong sentiments are there. Sometimes our own ambition should come after the country. And another one here, good motion, and uh, keep the discussion going. I'm talking about Benson and uh, Kissa Bully on Twitter. So keep talking to us. The hashtag is uh, Good Morning Kenya. You can also find us on SMS. 22162 is the SMS line. Begin with the initials GMK. Before the break, we were touching on the issue of how progressive the Constitution is. Uh, but for now, allow me with pleasure to introduce Kandara Member of Parliament, Honorable Alice Wahome, who's joined us on set. Karibu sana. Thank you. Thank how you are you very doing much. this I'm morning? Doing, I'm doing fine. All right. Yes, uh, thank you for inviting me. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah thank you very much. And uh, before yeah. the break, Mashimi, we were looking at uh, Kenya moving forward yes. past the ruling yesterday. Maybe you can give us a brief recap from your end. Uh, I think the, the, the time for Kenya to move forward is here. Taking into account that uh, the first uh, poll uh, was on uh, 8th of August. If you look at that calendar now, we have uh, somehow lost uh, three months since the first poll. And uh, for an annual year, to lose three months is not easy. And uh, the, I, I think Kenyans, the, the, the majority of Kenyans, even those who were opposed to maybe the, the, pres uh, the president, Uhum Kenyatta, the majority of Kenyans are interested in a peaceful nation. They are interested in uh, putting the country back together. They are interested in going back to their lives. They are normal lives because our normal lives is not electioneering. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I think I welcome the ruling. You know, remember that we went back to the vote because the court had ordered that we go back to the ballot for various reasons. That, of course, me coming from the Jubilee is not something we took uh, lightly. We, we didn't like it. We were very disturbed. But uh, because the rule of law must reign in a country which is claiming to be democratic, we swallowed the bitter pill and went on to campaign. We've been campaigning and therefore on 26th, what we brought back is really a milestone for us considering the environment at that time, 7.4 million votes for Uhuru Kenyatta. So, but the most important thing now is that the work has begun of building the nation. There are areas that we have to put more attention, in my view, especially uniting Kenyans, 
you know, there is this perceived divide mm -hmm. that is normally there during election mm -hmm. period. Yes. And even in constituencies like where I was running, there are those who did not vote for me and they are hopeful. And, and, you know, and for sure I'm not a member of parliament for those who voted for me. Mm -hmm. No single leader who is elected would start saying, my constituency is the constituency that voted for you. Mm -hmm. Because the unit is one. Remember, sure. Kenya is one nation. And, and it, it should remain as one nation. So it is, uh, it is important that all Kenyans of goodwill, those opposed, who were opposed to this presidency, to come together for the betterment of this nation. Mm -hmm. yeah, we have programs that, as a government, that we promised this second round to start roaring, you know, roaring out. His Excellency has talked about free education for secondary. He has talked, you know, paying bursaries mm -hmm. for the... the, the and I can tell you, no amount of money actually is normally enough. From the bursary, you cannot meet the needs. We, women are still expecting clean water, domestic water, mm -hmm. in their homes. I cannot meet that need. There, there is a access, rural access roads. He's, you know, everywhere, it, it, be it Bondo, be it Kandara, be it Masabe, be it Mombasa, Coast, Taveta, mm -hmm. everywhere, Kenyans want delivery of services. Mm -hmm. And that complementing each other, the county government and the national government can be able to deliver the next five years sufficient uh, uh, services so that Kenyans can start feeling devolution. Mm -hmm. and, and therefore, I really am totally opposed to thinking uh, about people's um, assembly because, you know, this country has just started uh, rolling out the devolution. Right. We, I mean, there are many teething problems. The governors have not even uh, thought out properly. You know, the, the ones who came back, some were removed, mm -hmm. but even the ones who came back have their own challenges in terms of putting systems in place. We may fault them, but you know, you can imagine it's a new office, it's a new concept, and therefore, we, and the, the expectation of more money, more, better services to the people mm -hmm. continue to be the order of the day. The electrification, connection of electric, electrification program is, is such a good program for Kenyans, where the national government is increasing funding to enable every Kenyan have power, light in their homes. Connection, Just if yeah. the connection, yeah. To the grid. To the grid. Connection to the grid. To the grid. How, however, uh, you know, um, we, there will be an inauguration yes. of the president on the 28th. The swearing in is on the 28th. The swearing in is on the 28th. Oh. Priorities for President Uhuru Kenyatta, what should they be uh, as soon as he's uh, sworn in, Manu? Well, um, first I appreciate the sentiment of my I esteem and pride in, uh, in where the country should be headed. Mm -hmm. The challenge is really experiencing it because um, it's been introduced in 2010. However, I disagree with uh, the issue of moving on. You know, as a country, yes, we need to move on. We need to, you know, set the agenda and you know, start to go back to our different things to do. But if we don't feel politically, then we can be able to do you know, I can, I can stay with that country. Like right, 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 Manu. I, I'm, I'm told we've got to pay a very critical bill right about now, but we'll be back in a mm -hmm. short while. Come back to the program. Manwa, I'm crossing over to you straight. And before we went uh, for that break, you were disagreeing with Mheshimi on the issue of moving on. Yes. Kindly pick it up from there. Well, uh, you see, there is the narrative that has been going on that we need to move on and go back to our, our work and, you know, build the nation together. The question could be, and, and we discussed earlier the, the, the relationship between uh, the political situation and the economic situation in this country. They are both married. You cannot be able to separate them. If the political mood is good, then the economy will grow. But if the political mood is not good, then definitely we'll have problems in building our economy. As we speak today, and we, we, we need to be honest to ourselves, mm -hmm. the country is split in half. And uh, there are people uh, from the NASA side who believe that uh, the, 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 elec the election as it was conducted was not, uh, uh, you know, carried as per their requirement, as per their 
uh, irreducible minimums that they had set. And so they have actually fashionably stated that they do not recognize the election of, uh, you know, Uru Mwigai Kenyatta as president. And on the other side, we have the Jubilee supporters, quite a number of supporters who also say that you already have a president, we need to sway him more, uh, as, as a president and, you know, move on. Now, how do we marry the two? If we can be able to come together in a table and look at our differences, then we can say we are moving on. But we cannot, uh, you know, move on with one facet of the country at the expense of the other. Now, if we will, of course, the swearing in will go as, as planned and uh, we'll have a president, the question would be, what is the... What, we, what, what is the legitimacy of such a presidency when uh, a substantial uh, uh, you know, uh, number of Kenyans do not even recognize the process itself through their supporters? Now, if we need to uh, you know, have a discussion of moving on, then we need to move on as a country together, not mm -hmm. as pieces. So I, I tend to disagree with the position that we need uh, Jubilee government needs to, you know, continue with its agenda and, and you know, building the nation uh, and, and just assume that whatever the NASA side of the political divide, uh, what they're stating is uh, useless. I, I, I would like to bring in Mheshimiwa mm -hmm. on that very issue. He questions the legitimacy of President Uhuru Kenyatta. Could you kindly respond to that? You see... Um my brother here is, is pretty aware that uh, even the swearing in that will happen next week is, is being done within the constitution, mm -hmm. constitutional framework because there is the period within which you, you, you should swear the president, mm -hmm. the period within which after you are declared the president-elect you must wait for a court judicial process to be completed and even before then there is a period for nomination, there is a period for campaign. So that uh, the constitution has certain criteria that it has set, which a presidential candidate to be able to be declared a president must meet. Mm -hmm. The first vote, you have to get 50 plus one. Thereafter, then you, and, and, and within the same 50 plus one, you must reach 25, at least uh, 24 counties, mm -hmm. whereby you get 25%. All this is uh, within the constitutional framework to, to, to give you the, the, you know, the legitimacy that Kenyans feel that, you know, because you, you can get the vote, but you are only cam, cam, campaigning in one specific region. So th this was supposed to reach out to every part of the country. When you look at uh, the presidential vote that we got, and then the number of seats we have in parliament, which is now about, uh, about 180 seats, plus others that are affiliated to Jubilee, mm -hmm. then you get over 200. When you go to governors, we have, I believe, we have 28 or so governors. Mm -hmm. They are those who are somewhere in between and they, they really want to start their work. Right. So the question of legitimacy cannot be, be you, you know, we have this, uh, I, well, I don't want to say it is imaginary because we must be sensitive to those people who voted for Raira in the first vote mm. because they had a certain expectation that he will win. There are those voters also who voted for Uhuru and had a, a, an expectation that their candidate will win. And they were very frustrated when that vote was actually returned back by the court. The, and that is why they were able to go back again to validate the same vote. So now when you come then to the question of legitimacy, there are people who did not go to the ballot because they were asked not to go to vote by the leader of opposition and the NASA fraternity. Go to America right now. The country is moving forward. And you know, Hillary Clinton won the popular vote. One, one ballot per one ballot counted. She had over two million votes against uh, President Donald Trump. But because in terms of... Um, what do you call them? In, in, the, electoral in, in, in the, the colleges, the electoral colleges. Mm. He had more colleges with more points than Hillary Clinton. And he was declared the president. And this is not the first time that a country will almost be, you know, even, even, even the last vote again, 2013, the margins were even maybe smaller than the current margins. So, and, and, and therefore, when you are declared the president, you are and you go to vie as a president or a candidate for the seat of the president 
for the Republic of Kenya. Mm -hmm. And people must know and must be told by candidates that we are likely to win. We are going in, in, in it for it to win. But when we lose, we must also be able to tell our supporters that, look, we did our best, we have lost, but because we are in Kenya and we are Kenya, we must now support the winning candidate. We must support the government. So if, if we now sit back and start saying, oh, we must sit, then it makes nonsense. Competition. Mm -hmm. we, we haven't changed the framework, the constitutional framework, mm -hmm. that says that once you win, we declare you the president, you have the right to form the government, and then you can actually decide who to include in the government. Remember, the president doesn't have a lifetime. He has a period of five years mm -hmm. to deliver on the promises he made. And he will be faulted if he does not deliver. Mm -hmm. And he must bring on board people of same mind, of same thinking, that will not distract him from his agenda of development, his development agenda. So therefore, even as you consider to include certain people, you see, in terms of development, he cannot, it's not possible to limit yourself, because even the constitution does not allow you to work in a certain place. I don't know, and my brother must know. So, so therefore, you can only put on board people to work with you who will help complete that agenda. Yeah. So, for example, yeah. how would he be able to include Honorable Raira Odinga? First, there is no acknowledgement that Uhuru Kenyatta won and won squarely. Until even that happens, then even including is a problem and it cannot be a condition because the condition you have met the constitution condition mm -hmm. for you to be declared the president so well, and i hear him but they uh, must now mm -hmm. start the hearing from their end to tell the supporters of nasa mm -hmm. that we've lost this game even if they feel it is unfair then look at where they feel you know we have another five years in parliament where we can be able to look at what reforms may be able to give the answers they are looking for. Over to you, Mark. Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> it's, it's interesting to, uh, you know, uh, listen to the narrative of legitimacy from the, the perspective of my senior and honorable member of parliament. I think we need to understand the philosophy of legitimacy from the people's perspective. And uh, we want to be live to the political situation in this country. Now, if you look at what NASA, the reason why NASA withdrew from the election it itself, the, that aspect, uh, political, li leave the legal aspect in it, because uh, obviously they did not even partake in the Supreme Court petitions which were filed. Now, look at the legal implication of that. When you tell your supporters do not partake or participate in this election, how will you unite these people once you've been elected by your own supporters and the supporters of the other party ha did not even go into an election? The essence of having an election is a competition, and I agree with her. It's a competition uh, where the winner takes it all. That is our system. But the question of the competition itself, was the competition fair? For you to gain legitimacy as a, as a president, you need to win the hearts of those people who did not believe in you, who did not support you politically. And that is the question that we are having right now. Did Was the process free, fair, and credible as provided for in Article, uh, uh, you know, in the Constitution, and uh, did it meet the values in Article 10 of the Constitution? And the answer is no. You can, we, we, can, we can debate that the whole day, but if you look at what transpired in the repeat election on 26th of, of, of September, uh -huh. we were treated to a situation whereby almost, uh, actually only 38% of Kenyans stand up to vote. Now, we cannot sit comfortably here and say that the remaining number of, of, of voters who re decided not to vote did not have a say in the political, as in the political system. And we cannot also say that mm -hmm. since they, they opted out and the law provides that we had to go into an election, then we assume that we will have an election. So those are the ailing issues that we need to amend before we ask ourselves whether we, we have a, legitim a legitimate president. Now, there are close to 25 constituencies which did not 
conduct an election. Now that question was raised in the legal in the legal in the, in the court, and and we do not know how the court determined the same. We cannot we can only be speculating as to how it uh, it it actually interpreted uh, the, the same. But there is that aspect of people not going into the ballot at all. At, you know. Yes. The, the, the two of you agree on one thing. Yes. That healing this nation and moving forward is not an event. Yes. It is a process. Yes. Where does this process begin? And, and, and I think I should... Uh, you see, I, they have been told. Yes, yeah. before she comes in. Yes, okay. before, before uh, she comes in. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the healing process starts from listening to each other. Mm -hmm. You know, you remember what happened in... 2008, 2007, 2007, 2008 post-election uh, violence, we had to push the leaders to come and sit down together. Mm -hmm. And this has been the message coming from the international community, coming from uh, non-political players, that you people need to sit down and ask yourself, what can we do for this country so that we heal and reconcile our people? But you see um, both of them having hardlines. Uh, NASA saying we cannot meet as long as, as, long as uh, if, if you want us to meet, then we meet on electoral reforms. Mm -hmm. Whereas Jubilee is saying, no, we cannot meet until we, say, we swear in the president and then we can have a conversation as to uh, how we can heal the, this, this country. If we continue with these hardlines, then we cannot be able to reconcile. Of course, the, there is the mood of reconciliation and coming together, but uh, you cannot reconcile once you've already taken the cake. Uh -huh. You cannot take the cake and say, now, let's reconcile. And yet, the issues that are being raised by the other body uh, is uh, actually concerns the same cake and the process of acquiring that cake. Mm -hmm. So once we actually sit down and look at those issues critically, we cannot say, say that we are moving on. We cannot have a country. Mahashimi, we're over to you. Where do we begin? I, I, I obviously, the, the president has a, a challenge that the, I'm sure he is capable of surmounting. Uh, and uh, he has good support from his deputy and the Jubilee team. It is not possible for an executive to work without the support of parliament. We have a sizable number. We will want to support the programs, the, you know, because we are talking about moving forward. Mm -hmm. We must now disconnect uh, sufficiently from the electioneering mood and challenges that faced us insofar as they are taking us back. But insofar as they are helping us to move forward, we can relate to them. Like, and I, that's why I said, I think we want to hear ideas of what could have been done better than that, ha that, that than was done. And you see, it is not possible to blame the winner. Here, we have an independent uh, electoral and boundaries commission. We, if you look at the road that they have been taken through by NASA, and, and I think NASA must take a fairly good blame in terms of the capacity of IBC. You know, when you build an institution, even an institution like this one, even your own home, if you keep on removing the walls, removing maybe certain beams, you will weaken instead of strengthening your institution, your home. Remember, we actually asked Isaac Hassan to go and the commissioners that had not even completed their term. Then we put in new commissioners as a team. And the, the, the NASA team was part of that process because we did it also through parliament. And then finally, when they started working, there were a lot of load blocks that really were put on the way and questioning until their confidence, even to be able to settle, was, was fairly tested to the last minute. I think there was a major turnaround by the NASA team after the first loss of the ballot. And you see, the questions that they raised after the Supreme Court you know, once you have partaken in the process, you've been part of the process, you've gone to the vote with that same process, and when the ballot is uh, returned, then you say, oh, uh, I have lost, and therefore I'm going to court. Then you go to court, and you believe in the process of the court. You get a judgment in your favor, and then thereafter, you want to go back on the judgment. You want to split the judgment to what is favorable, and what is not favorable to you, like, go back to the ballot. You see, the court even gave a specific period 
not because that is the period the court wanted to give. It's because it's the period dictated of 60 days by the same constitution. And, 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 and they are right. How do we move forward? Maybe discussions, engagement, dialogue could start coming along. But you see, if you make it a condition that before you start working, before you set up your government, we must sit down and have won. And that's what I said. Within what framework of the Constitution do we do that? Mm -hmm. Does the government wait until there is agreement? What if on that table, again, there is no disagreement? If there is no agreement, what are you doing to Kenyans? I think it is possible to bring the country together without some of these leaders. And we, because once you have lost, I have won Kandara seat. If the person who lost to me makes it a condition for me to engage Kandara constituency, then I will not do my work. And I had my own policies, I had my own manifesto that I sold to the people so that I got more votes than them. Mm -hmm. Irrespective, and you know even in this parliament, there are people who have won the others by maybe uh, less than 200 votes, less than 100 votes, and they will be the members of parliament until another five years. So I'm saying, you won't, uh, it is true that we must find a way of healing. There are various areas where people, you know, forums, workshops, meetings, looking at sincerity, because we also must, if we will start healing, we must be honest with each other. And, uh, you know, may I say this, the NASA should not assume that the people who voted for Uhuru Kenyatta are also not hurting, are not unhappy for reasons that they have been told, you stole the vote. And they know they cast the ballot. You see, you know, so, so all this tells us mm -hmm. that there are people who are not, that, that Kenya needs some time and the, that the, in terms of working together. But you know, like, w if you watched the newspaper in, in, in Nyeri, yes. there are a few of, of uh, members of the rural community who live and work in Nyeri. And you know, I saw them now coming together with the, the kikuyus in the market, and they put up big sufrias, and they started Shared cooking the ugari, they shared a meal. Mm -hmm. I think small things like those should not be taken for granted. And that's why I'm saying we need to start even with being honest, whether we really believe that we lost theory or unfairly. And I think there is an element where if we look at the same process that produced the members of parliament in the NASA, and they are not unhappy, they are not returning back. They're not going back to the battle. They have not told us they will abandon their seats in parliament. Mm -hmm. What are we saying? Let's be a bit honest so that even the engagement can start from an honest perspective so that then they bring their people on board to be served by the same government. The, same the laws will be on the people, not on the individual members. Because, you know, I have lost a seat, but should the Kandara lose completely? We've got two gentlemen here. Yeah. We've got the president, Uhuru mm -hmm. Kenyatta. Yeah. We've got uh, uh, Honorable Raila Odinga. What political capital do they possess in terms of moving this country forward? Both Uhuru, uh, President Uhuru, and Raila Odinga, what political capital do they actually have in their hands that they can use to heal and steer this country forward? I'll begin with you, Manuel. Yeah, just, just before I answer that question, I, I, I think I, I need to respond to what uh, the Honorable Member stated. Uh, you see, we, we assume so many things, critical things. Uh, what was introduced uh, to the IEBC by NASA after the first Supreme Court declaration was as, uh, were issues that they raised from the judgment which they thought that the IEBC had to comply to. Now, the, the, the biggest problem they had was to have, you know, post, they wanted the elections to be postponed to be able to have, to build capacity within IBC to be perceived by the public to conduct, to be able to conduct a free, fair and credible election. Now, from the Jubilee, and, and we, have, we have stated this before, they, they were on applying the law strictly, stating that the Constitution and even the Supreme Court stated, which is true, that we need to have an election within 60 days. Now, the question would be, which part of the Constitution is more superior than the other? Is it the one that provides for 
uh, having an election within 60 days after the nullification of an election, or is it the one that provides for the, the values upon which that a, 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 a free, fair, and credible election can be conducted? That was the question, and that was the question that should have been interrogated by both parties before we went to this election. Now, what we had was an election which was comp uh, an election whereby the parties, compl IBC complied with one part of the law and actually uh, left the bigger aspect of the law out of the question. Now, away from that, as to what political capital both parties have, they have a little political capital. Look, look at uh, the, the support both parties are having. Uh, both parties draw a lot of support, and she has stated that you know Jubilee has uh, a lot of support from both houses of government, uh, houses, houses, both in the Senate and the National Assembly, which is true. And uh, NASA, in, in its own capacity, has also a substantial support. And uh, we can we can we can be able to debate as to which side has the people support, or um, you know, because you cannot rate uh, the this, the kind of uh, uh, majority you have in both houses to be able to say this person has a majority of the Kenyan support. So they, they have the capacity as two leaders, uh, the political capital as, as the two leaders to reconcile and move this country forward. It's beyond me as a, as a citizen and as a voter in this country. It's beyond uh, the Honorable Member Parliament of Kandara. Uh, uh, at the moment what we need is the two parties because they are the face of this country. They, they represent uh, a big margin, actually the entire margin of the, the entire uh, country in, in the political aspect. So we need them to, we need them to coexist. Remember what happened, uh, and, and we have, I've reiterated that example before, what happened after the post-election violence? We had to have a mediator to bring us together and, and you know, set up an accord to regulate us you know, for five years. It worked. It worked overwhelming because people cooled down, the temperatures cooled down. Now, what we are having here is uh, a time bomb. If these people keep on holding, uh, you know, uh, they are sticking to their own positions, uh, political positions, I've had uh, my senior here uh, stating that they, they can bring the country together without the other political players. That, is, that would be a big uh, gamble because you cannot be able to purport to bring a country that is extremely polarized together when it's, uh, it's actually questioning your credibility as, a, as the head of state. So we need to look at mechanisms that can reconcile both parties. And I'm not talking about uh, splitting of government. I'm, I'm talking about asking uh, this party, what do you need to do? And it's, it's, it's true that the law needs to work as it's set under the Constitution. We need to have a, uh, you know, inauguration of the president. We need to swear in a president and all that, as the law requires. But does this process, the legal process, justify the political issues that are being raised? No. It doesn't justify the, the legal issue. It doesn't actually answer to the uh, pertinent political questions which are being raised. We need to find a way whereby we can reconcile the ailing parties. As we speak, people are, the statistics are going up. People are dying every day. Uh, we are having people dying uh, all over, uh, you know, destruction of property. What is this uh, uh, that we, what we are having uh, is as a result of the political temperature in the country. What if these people could have uh, sat down? I, I can give you an example of what is happening in Zimbabwe. There's a change of tact. There's a change of leadership going on currently, but there's nobody dying. Why? Because they believe they can do these things without, uh, you know, essentially having to kill or to, to maim people. They, 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 there's a, a way you can do things as a, as a head of state. And, and, and I, I challenge the Jubilee government because now you seem to be having the government. And uh, Uru Mugai Kenyatta has been enjoying incumbency up to the, the time he was declared president elect. He should have actually looked at a way to bring together these people who do not support him. You know, when, when you want to be a leader for everyone, you need to incorporate these people who do not support you because we live in one country. Mm -hmm. We live in a, a, a one Kenya where, and, 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 and I applaud the people of Nyeri, uh, you know, the associations. We have people from different, uh, uh, actually, uh, political divide ailing and actually suffering from the political temperature. Mm -hmm. Over yes. to you, my Shimeo. Mm. You see, when we read that the heading that you have given us today, Way Forward for Kenya, Yes. 
way forward for Kenya and the question of what political capital does Uhuru and yeah, Raira possess or have in terms of helping to move the country forward. Mm -hmm. it, the two are playing in different leagues. The head of state will be sworn in as the leader of government and head of state. Uh, then the other one will be the leader of the opposition unless he resigns to that position, from that position. The leader of opposition in this country within our constitutional framework has a very major role and that can be enhanced in terms of checking the government. And you see, government needs to be checked. And the way our structure of government is, 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 is set, it is set to, uh, to, 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 to have minority and majority. Meaning, with the, the minute you win in terms of the presidency, members of parliament, you become the, ma minor the majority, and the others become the minority. I is it that we are refusing some of the role that eventually, after you have gone to the poll, that you actually get? And is it because maybe it doesn't have sufficient, maybe, uh, things to keep you busy or to be able to participate in, gov in governance? Because the leader of minority is not outside the, gov the governance structure. You may not be in the government, but you are within the governance structure of the country. Don't we need a strong opposition? I think the capital they need now to look at is a strong opposition that is not destructive, that helps to build the nation. And within those parameters, then, for me, an engagement, a discussion can be held. How do we work the two teams, even when we go to parliament, how do we facilitate sufficient engagement to be able to work and satisfy the country? Mm. Parliament is a platform that can actually be able to play a big role in that, uh, you know, in, in that work. But if we continue thinking that uh, because you have b this big following, you are bringing a new, a new, dynami you know, uh, new dynamics that are not anticipated by the Constitution. And uh, if the, the, the reference to 2007 to 2008 uh, has, has, has been raised and brought forward a lot. But are we in 2007 and 2008? And should we have the same person doing the same things that they did in 2007? You see, the, 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 the question of, uh, because I have this big number of people and I did not win, I must participate in government. I think I, we, we, we in Jubilee don't understand that. Because we also work very hard mm. to actually win. Mm. We spend our time and resources and engage Kenyans so that we can win. We don't agree that there was, there, there, there was any advantage. There was no advantage for us. If there was an advantage, we would not have lost the first vote mm -hmm. through the court. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we, there are checks and balances that, 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 that keep on balancing the country so that we don't go over the precipice. And um, people have died, it is true, and it is unfortunate because no Kenyan should die because of elections. But we must also now start as leaders, as people who have been positioned, have position, been positioned because of our political activity in that privileged position, to be so insensitive in, in that uh, you don't even condemn people who are moving in the streets with the stones and boulders. And you see, these people believe in them. These people believe in Uhuru. These people believe in Raira. But we have not had condemnation. We have not had uh, instructions coming because, you know, there will be instructions of, you know, no reform, no elections. Why don't you tell, why doesn't Raira Odinga, and, and I, I'm sure his people, some of them are listening, listening to us. Why don't they say you will not come to demonstrations, for example, armed with stones and borders or knives? Let us see how the police then will behave. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, there were youths that were trying to ban, to, you know, to enter into a police station for destruction purposes. You see, that's really playing with fire. 
And you know, those are things that we must tell our supporters not to attempt because there will definitely be a confrontation that will mm. be will, will cause injury to Mwananchi. And, and even the police must get the right instructions. They must handle Kenyans, you know, appropriately and properly without being excessively, you know, forceful, forceful on them. Right. But you see, look at, you know, even stones are killing some of the policemen. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that is where we don't want to go. And you cannot take advantage of the control of the crowd mm -hmm. to now say, because this crowd is mine, mm -hmm. I will not let the one who won to lead the nation. Because that is actually quoting war. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Very quickly, uh, mm -hmm. I'll split a minute between the two of you for final words. Yes. Mm -hmm. Manuel, very fast, then we will finish with Mashimura. Well, thank you, Sam. I think we need to, uh, going forward as a country, we need to revisit what is ailing us as a country. And uh, I'll say it uh, with certainty that the biggest problem we are experiencing as a country is the politics of exclusivity. We have, uh, you know, political exclusion, and we have people who have been uh, consistently been excluded in sharing the national cake. Right. We need to ask ourselves, what do we need to do to ensure that we all share the national cake? That is the only way we can heal as a country. Otherwise, if both political sides keep their uh, uh, hard stance, we cannot be able to move forward right. as, as, as a country. As a country. Meshimil. I think for a long time, the Honorable Raira Odinga, the right Honorable Raira Odinga, has made a good attempt at presidency. And through that, he has earned himself a big following. But I think it is time for him to, to liberate his followers so that he must tell them, when I lose, this is the time to say I have lost. Mm -hmm. and, and then it is time for Uhuru Kenyatta to, you know, like he has been on the question of uniting the nation, to go deeper and further to ensure that the programs and the activities of national building the country development is going to be seen to be inclusive, not exclusive. The question of the exclusive, uh, I think for me, is actually a narrative. Because which country, which part of this country would claim that the president has not been able to come up with programs? Is, and, and, and you see, not every area of the country can be able to be reached in five years. Right. And therefore, I think... Uh, let us not create narratives mm -hmm. that seem to want to say people are excluded because you as a leader has not been able to be part of the government. Uh, yeah. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you both for coming to the show and for expressing uh, your sentiments. Manuel mm -hmm. Hosea, thank you so much for coming. Uh, Alice Wahome, mm -hmm. Honorable Alice Wahome, Member of Parliament for Kandara, thank you so thank much you. for coming. And thank you for watching the show. Uh, that has been a conversation around uh, moving forward as a nation. We do hope that you've been able to pick a thing or two in as far as that discussion is concerned. Health Tuesday is coming up and next. Do not go anywhere. This remains to be the only way to start your day. Good morning, Kenya.